Hey, welcome everyone. This is Ned from Caspio. Welcome to Caspio Live. Today is officially our very last session for about two months, and we will be coming back after I come back from my pat leave. Uh, it'll take about two months. Hopefully, I can come back refreshed. We'll see about that. <laughs> hey, King Capo, welcome back. Yeah, if you didn't attend my previous live stream, uh, I did announce the news that today will be the last Caspio Live for about two months. But don't fret, we will be back in about two months. And I will post a new topic uh, on our YouTube channel so that you can see. I think the next topic is going to be, uh, or the next live stream will be in about two months. So we're looking at, uh, I think, October. So I'm probably aiming maybe October 31st as the comeback. Uh, session. Thank you, thank you. Hey, hey, David. Good to see you. Hey, Didier. Welcome back. Glad you guys can hear me as well. Usually that's my quick maintenance item before I begin, but looks like you guys, the audio is coming in. Um, yeah, today we have um, an application we're going to develop from scratch. We're going to build a member directory application. And the whole premise of this application is for people to sign up, log in, be able to find other no code developers that are in the directory and also send a message to each uh, user. If they have a question regarding a specific no code tool that they are proficient in. Okay. Hey, Brian, nice to see you as well. All right. And then at the end of today's live stream, I do have a question that came in last week on how to share a results page. Um, I have a small demo created for that. Uh, and we'll take a look at it at the end of today's live stream. Hopefully, uh, it's exactly what the person was, uh, was looking for. If not, then we can definitely explore other methods in how we can share that results page on social media by copying a link and simply just pasting that link. Uh, on LinkedIn or Facebook or other social media account. So let me give you a quick demo of this application so that you know exactly what we plan on developing. So we have a public facing registration form uh, for anyone to sign up. Uh, if you're into no code, you can see I kind of created a small network, social network here for people to sign up. Uh, and then as soon as they sign up, they can log in. And once they log in, I'll use myself as the sample user. And please don't pay too much attention to the aesthetics, the look and feel. I didn't spend too much time on that because I only allocate about two hours on Fridays to, to build the content for the live stream. If I wanted to, I could have made this look much, much nicer. But again, I only have about two hours to build the content for the live stream. So I apologize for the crude looking uh, design, at least on the internal when people log in. The registration form looks nice, but everything else may not be um, as visually appealing as that registration form. So here is my profile when I log in. Uh, what we have here is for me to select which low code or no code tools I'm proficient in. So I can do that. I can see how many times my profile was viewed. Uh, we have a public profile that we'll click on in just a second. I can update my name, my email, and then the about me section. And then I can also choose to make my profile public if I wanted to. So the way we have the profile views increasing is when somebody looks at my public profile, which I can click on, it's going to open up a new tab. And again, it's not the best looking design. If you guys have attended my previous live streams, uh, we talked about how we can rearrange the layout or organize the layout to make it look more cohesive and presentable. So here's my public profile. Anyone can send me a message. They can see the about me. They can see what tools I'm uh, proficient in and my image and my name. So if you guys can do me a quick favor, I'm going to share this link inside a chat window. If you guys can click on that link and just make a quick submission, maybe just a contact subject and message. You don't have to fill out the entire form and please don't submit any personal information because we're going to look at that data in just a moment when you guys submit that form. So. Just go ahead and submit the form really quickly. And uh, yeah, I'll give you guys a few seconds to do that before I come back to my application here and show you the rest of it. 
<clears throat> so now I imagine that a few of you clicked on that link. So what that means is that this profile view counter should go up. As soon as I refresh my profile, you can, you can now see 37. So as soon as somebody looks at my profile, they're gonna, my counter will he, here will increase and I'll be able to see how many people have seen it. Just a nice little metric for me as the user to know if people are looking at my profile. Okay, um, I can always copy this link, bookmark it, and if I need to share that link with somebody, I can send them that link and they have access to my full profile and they can always contact me if they want to. Of course, you can add other fields. You don't have to limit your form to just first name, last name, email. But for the interest of time, uh, I keep my applications basic so that we can build all of this in the live stream. Okay. So I also assume that somebody submitted, that you guys have sent me a message or two. So let's click on messages. And yeah, I'm not seeing any messages to come in. Have you guys had a chance to? Oh, it requires a login. Done. Oh, that's interesting. No, that should be a public facing one. Oh, I, you know what? I made a mistake in my application. I was supposed to build two different types of contact forms, one that's public and one that's not. Let me see if I can fix that very quickly. So my apologies. Let me see what I did wrong there. So send a message, view messages, public profile. Okay, so I know what I did wrong here. So we need to... I need to have two forms because I have one that's internal for people to send me a message and one needs to be public, which still passes the ID. So let me disable that. I apologize. And let's just make sure that the form is sending the... It should. So if you can now click on that link one more time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Click on the link once and you should be able to see... You should be able to see the... Uh, the form now. And there are the messages coming in. So one from David, and hopefully a few more will come in as you guys now are able to click on the link and see the form. Okay. So this allows me to check my messages. And then if I want to find members that are, that are signed up, I can go to my find members. And then here I can filter based on the skill level. So if I'm looking for somebody who specializes in Webflow, I can click on that, hit search, and I think, yeah, we only have two users that are proficient in Webflow. If I want to combine that with Caspio, I should still get these two listed. Uh, well, all three, because I have somebody else uh, who specializes in Caspio too. So it uses or instead of and, logical operator, okay, to filter the data. Internally, okay, I can't log in. Auth failed. Yeah, sorry about that. But now it should be it should be okay. You shouldn't have to um, to log in to fill out the form. If I go back to my messages and take a look, yeah, now I can see a whole bunch of messages coming in. So that's good. It's working the way it's supposed to. And if I don't want my profile to be listed here in the directory, so you can see I'm listed, I can go to my profile. And let's say I'm not ready to publish my profile, I can deactivate it, hit update. Okay, and then when I go back to find members, if all goes well, I shouldn't be able to see myself listed. And now nobody else can find my profile. Okay, it's a very simple app. Uh, think of it like a mini social network for no coders. Um, and you can, you can commercialize this. You can actually make it public uh, if you'd like. Uh, you can keep it a freemium model the way I've designed it here. You can also monetize if you have a small monthly fee. Let's say your website takes off and you want to charge a monthly fee to collect some revenue, you could do that, okay? So just this nice, simple app. If you do your marketing around it and correct SEO, it could take off. You know, there's a growing market for uh, no-code developers out there, and there's so many no-code and low-code tools available that I can see this um, really taking off. But, you know, for me, there's a conflict of interest. But for you, <laughs> you could develop this and make it public as a SaaS type application. All right, so now that we've seen the demo, I have my web pages created here that I'm gonna be using to embed my data pages that I develop in Caspio. So inside my account, let's go back to the live build. So this is the one. The only thing that I created ahead of time are my tables. 
I don't want to I don't want to have you guys sitting here looking at me creating my fields one at a time and my data types. I'm just going to go through each table, but if you want to replicate what I'm doing here, you can pause the video later on on our YouTube channel and you can just quickly copy what I created. Or as always, I make the applications available as a download in the description of the video. So you can have the whole entire app imported into your account and you can see how I developed all the interfaces. But let's start with the members table. So this is more or less the main table. We have our unique ID at the top. You always need to have a unique ID in every table that you create. We have our first name, last name, full name. You guys know that if you've attended my classes in the past, I always like to have first and last name by itself, and I like to concatenate my values together as a full name. So if you look at the formula data type and we click on edit, this is how you combine the first and last name. You include plus space in parentheses one to create a space another plus sign, and then the last name to combine those two fields together. The email field is unique. You can't have two people with the same email address. We have our password, which is set to a password data type to encrypt the password on the table level. The about me section needs to be text 64,000 so that we can, you know, see more about that user and information. Uh, profile photo. So if you want to have an avatar or a picture of the user, go ahead and include that. We have skills. Now for skills, I listed that as a list string. And these are my values that I have. Of course, the list is probably longer. There's so many no-code and low-code tools available, but these are the ones that I came up with. The account status is gonna be used for like an admin level user to make users active or inactive. So let's say you're monetizing via your application and somebody stopped paying you. I don't want this user to log in anymore. So we deactivate the account by unchecking the box. Profile status allows the user to control if they want their profile to be public or not public in that directory that we looked at just a moment ago. Then we have date created, that's a timestamp. Date last updated, also timestamp. This one stamps on update. And then this one stamps on insert. And then profile views. This allows uh, the user to be able to see how many people have seen their profile. So just make sure you set the data type to number and then you'll see on the data page later on how we have this feature to do a page increment view, which increases the view count by one. Okay, and that's just a built-in feature in Caspio. All right, my second table that we're gonna look at is the messages table, very simple. We have the message ID, we have the member ID because we need to be able to associate our messages back to our user because one user can have many messages. Subject, message, first name, last name, email, phone, date, sent. So this is the information that we're collecting from somebody who's sending us a message. And then finally, we have a simple lookup table where I have my random ID and a no-code platform. If I look at my data sheet tab, you will see that I listed all of my no-code platforms right over here. All right, so those are my tables. Very simple application, okay? And we only build simple applications in these live streams because we don't have that much time. So let's begin. When you have a user table, you always want to build your view so that you can control, you know, your active users versus your inactive users. So we use the view to filter our data from the table. Okay. So we create the view and we're going to call this MD for member directory view filter active members from the member table move that to the right hit next and then in the criteria tab we want to be able to see the active users so we need that field for account status to be checked so if that condition is true if it's checked in the table now you're going to be able to see a view that lists all the members that are active so when i open that we have three members that are currently active from that table myself ryan and karen Next step is to create the authentication. Okay, so we're gonna choose the view that we just created that's filtering all the active members. Let's do custom, recommended. We're gonna do email, and then we have our password field. Now, I always like to use custom because I can add additional elements to my login screen, including if I wanted to have a header that says account login, or maybe forgot password link that's underneath my password field, which is also very useful and beneficial to your end user. And then here down below in the advanced settings, uh, I want to have a logout destination. So when somebody logs out of the app, I need to send them to a specific web page 
And in this case, I have a page created, sumapp.com and P. Um, let's see, what did I call my folder? I forgot. <laughs> let's come back here and I call the directory live. So that's my directory. So directory live. And we want to take them back to the home page, index.html when they log out. We're going to hit save. Actually, why don't we copy that? and include that in timeout and redirection. So if they're away from the application, let's say for three days, I want to automatically log them out and send them to that URL and hit save. Okay, we're gonna hit create and let's call this, let's call this MD member login. Okay, so I already have the same name in my other application, so I need to come up with something more unique. So why don't we do uh, member auth? for authentication. Okay, so we have our tables, we have our view that's filtering active members, and we have our login screen that's built on top of the view that's only giving access to the active members. All right, let's start developing all of our data pages. I think we'll need about eight data pages for this application, and I always like to create my login redirect. If you guys have attended my previous live streams, uh, what I like to do is I like to hide my navigation menu, my internal navigation menu from my external homepage where people land. So if I come back to my live example, let's log out. Hopefully I've set this up. Let me, oh, maybe I didn't set it up. I went through this whole entire application and I thought I had everything working the way it was supposed to, but it looks like, okay, so it's doing something. Okay, good. So let's go back to sign in. You can see how I'm hiding my main internal navigation menu. So if I click on sign in, once I log in, the application is going to redirect me to a different web page of my website. So if, as soon as I log in, you're going to be able to see it's taking me to profile, my profile.html. So that's exactly what I want to do. So if I look at my web pages that I've created, uh, where is my, here we go. So it's called my, I have the same exact web page. It's called myprofile.html. So then in cast view here, we're going to use the HTML data page. We're going to hit next. Let's use the blue style for now. Uh, let's do member login, redirect, English localization and restrict access to the uh, authentication that we just created, which is coming from this object over here. Okay, so we need to apply that. We're going to hit next. Let's disable the toolbar and then write a very simple line. It's a very simple script that it redirects the user when they log in. So we're going to do script uh, windows dot location equals sign. And then uh, I called it my profile, but let's call it, let's include the entire path to the URL, so HTTPS, sumapp.com, NP directory live, and then we call this um, myprofile.html, okay? And then we'll do that, and we'll close the script. We have this in our knowledge base, if you guys forget how to write that, but all it's doing is, as soon as somebody logs in, I want the user to go to this page here, okay? We're gonna hit finish. And that's my very first data page. The next data page that we're going to create is the registration form. So let's build that data page quickly. So that needs to be a submission form. Hit next based off of the member table. Let's give it a name. Member registration. Use the same style blue. Same localization. It needs to be a public facing registration form. So we don't need to apply any kind of authentication because everyone needs to be able to sign up as soon as they come to our website. So we want to collect the first name, last name, email, password. Now it's up to you what fields you want to make public for people to sign up. I'm a believer that when it comes to a registration form, keep it minimal. Don't overwhelm the user, you know, to sign up on your website. But once they log in, they should be able to complete their profile by adding their photo, um, the about me section. But there's no reason for them to fill all of that out on the registration form. Get them through the door quickly, and then once they log in, they can do all of that. So let's have um, account status. And I think that's good enough for now. Let's continue. The first name is most likely going to be a required field. Last name required field. 
Email is automatically required because it's unique inside the table. Password is required. And another thing that I like to do is, and this is just a personal preference, I like to put all of my labels when it comes to forms. I like to put my labels as placeholders inside the field. And then I will simply say no label. Okay, because now my label is actually inside the field. The user can actually see that when they click inside the field, they can begin typing. Let's do last name, same thing. Just copy that, paste that as a placeholder, remove the label. Email, same thing, copy, paste, remove the label. And you'll see in just a moment what that looks like. In fact, if I hit preview now, you can see how I'm putting all of my labels inside the fields as placeholders. Same thing with password, let's copy. So I will, usually this is how I treat the password field. So I'll say create password and then I'll say confirm. Confirm new password. Okay. And again, we'll say no label and then account status. Well, this needs to be a hidden field. And by default, I want that to be checked. Meaning as soon as my user signs up, I want to give them access to their account right away. Let them log in. Okay. But you can control this. If you want to be a buffer between them logging in, you can keep this unchecked. If you want to review their information and if you think that the information is legit, now you can go into your table or build a data page to allow them to log into the application. So a bit of a manual process to review their info and then approve and then they can log in. I like to give them access right away. Okay. And that's it. So let me hit finish. And what I'll do here is I'll actually deploy the registration form. So let's deploy it, grab our embed code, copy it. And then here in my notepad plus plus, these are my HTML documents that I have. Okay, so we have our home page where I plan on embedding my registration form. Don't worry if you don't know any HTML code yourself. Uh, if you're joining these live streams for the very first time, I've talked about this in the past. You can use Webflow, you can use Weebly, you can use WordPress. These are all very easy to, to use CMS platforms where you can build your website without needing to know how to code. But here's my placeholder where I plan on putting my registration form. I'm just going to remove that and paste it and save my document. Now my index page, my home page contains my registration form, what I can do using WinSCP, which is just a tool that I use to move my local files to my web server. Okay, so here I can refresh. Here is my index page. Notice how my index page now, if I go back to my website and I refresh, there's my registration form. I Oh, because this is this isn't live, this is local. So that's why you can see the registration form because this is local. But if I go live, so let's just say we go live now. I haven't moved my files over yet. So sumapp.com np you won't see that registration form yet. Because what I need to do is I need to move that local file. So here's my index page. I move that over to my host. I override that page. Done. Now when I reload my live link, you will be able to see that registration form embedded. Okay. And now if I share that link with you guys, you'll be able to see the form same as I can. So in this live example, Let's log out. Notice how the form looks much nicer. Okay, so I have predefined my style ahead of time. I have the style already created. It took me about maybe 20 minutes to come up with the style. So if I edit my data page, my registration form, and I hit next, I do have a style that I'm gonna use in today's live stream. It's called registration form, MD for member directory. So I'm just gonna choose that, hit finish and reload my page. And now you can see what it looks like. The only thing I need to do to my form is come back to my data page, which is something that I also like to do is make my fields a little bit wider. So I will come back here and I will say first name, pixels, 400, last name, pixels, 400, same thing with email, 400, make that pixels, password, same thing. And we don't need to worry about the checkbox. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh. And now you will see a much wider registration form. And of course, my email field, I forgot to change. So let me fix that. Maybe I didn't 
use the right width. So let me come back here, hit edit. Uh, email. Yeah, I made it 300 pixels. Let's make that 400 pixels. And now everything will be the same width. And if you guys think that I spent a lot of time modifying my style, I really didn't. Let me show you. So I'll go, I'll go into that style really quickly so you can see what I did. So here is my style. And all I did here for the background, so if we look at my source under layout, I removed it. So yeah, sorry, where is my uh, outer container? Registration form source. Yeah, so usually what you'll see here under source when it comes to form table, okay, in this class here, you will see background color and then you'll see FFF. Usually that's a hex code for white. So you'll see a background color of white. All I did was just remove that. That's all that I did. So if you want to remove that background color and make it more transparent, just remove that property from your class, okay? The next thing that I did was actually using our standard tab here, the settings tab. If you look at my fields, the border, I made this blue color, and then the background color of my fields, I made it darker blue. So if you look at my form now on the web, you will see this border color is blue and the background color is dark blue. And then my placeholders are white. So if I come back here and look at errors and messages, placeholder, you can see I made that text white. Okay, and that's all I did. I don't want you guys to think I use some fancy styling to make the form look that presentable. I really didn't. It's just all standard features in Caspi. Can this work for restaurants? Yeah, you can build any kind of an application in Caspi with any kind of workflow that you want for any industry. So for your restaurant, if you're looking to, well, I don't know what kind of application you're hoping to develop for the restaurant, but you could. You could have members sign up, maybe give you some feedback about the restaurant if you'd like, or you could have uh, I actually don't know the industry too well to offer any kind of advice on how you can improve your workflows when it comes to your restaurant, but I would have to think about it a little bit more and figure that part out. But yeah, it can be used. It just depends on what you want to do with the application and what kind of fields you want to collect on the tables and what kind of forms and reports you want to create. Okay. Fried chicken and Caspio collab. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how you can collaborate with uh, fried chicken and Caspio, but hopefully you can find a way. Okay. But if you want, you can just uh, message me offline. If you have some ideas, let me know what you want to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have our member registration. People can now sign up on our website. They're going to be able to log in. And as soon as they log in, let's see if the login is working, actually. So let's come back here. Let's go to sign in. Oh, I need to deploy my login screen. So if I go to my login page, you will see empty here. OK, so I need to deploy my data page. So let's do that next. Let's grab our login screen, grab our embed code, go back to our HTML file, and then let's find the page called sign in. All right, so this is the one we're going to paste our login screen and let's move that file now using WinSCP. So let's refresh. Here's my sign in page. Move it over to the right, override, and then come back here and reload and we should be able to see the login screen. And it's, it's redirecting me back to this index page because of my authentication settings that I enabled. So let me quickly remove that. We'll come back to this later. So I need to remove the uh, timeout and redirect. So this one here, automatic timeout and redirection. So let's go ahead and remove that for now. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. So let's save. Uh, no. Okay. And let's come back now to the web page, refresh, go to the sign in. And we should be able to see that login screen now. And there's my login screen. All right. Hey, Alan, good morning. Welcome to the live stream. All right, so what's gonna happen now when I log in, so let me log in, I'm the sample user. I'll quickly log into my account and it should redirect me to my profile. If all goes well, maybe there's a delay here, I don't know, but it should have redirected me to my profile. I'm gonna copy this link 
just so I can have it for now. Let me refresh the page. Unless my script has an error in it, let's come back to that login redirect data page. And let me see why it's not working. So windows.location. Oh, windows. Window.location. You guys can see that when it comes to coding, even the slightest mistake will throw everything off. So I was off by a letter there. It really needs to read window.location. So let's try that one more time. Let's come back here. All right, so let me see if I can fix this somehow. Let's just go to my profile. Dot com. Directory live my profile dot HTML, not dot com. Okay, so now I'm inside the profile. I think the redirect will work, but we'll have to log out. I need to set up my log out and go back to the index page and log back in. But I'm pretty sure it will work at this point. Uh, but here I am inside my profile. So what we need to do now next is build that data page that allows the user to modify their profile. Okay, so let's build that data page next. So create a new data page and we're going to use a report. Well, we could use the update form as well since we're updating the single record update. Let's do that. Let's use single record update. We're going to hit next based off of the member table and let's call this update my profile. We're going to use the style. In this case, I can use my blue style. I think that's fine. Or I can use this one here that I created my profile. Let's do that. Uh, we're going to use our English localization and we need to restrict access to our member authentication, right? Remember, you need to be logged in before you can update your own profile. Hit next. We're going to find this through the member ID field. So you need to apply record level security because in order for that member to be able to see their info, we have to use record level security based on their member ID in order for them to see their own information. We're going to hit next. And now what information do I want my members to be able to update? So I want them to be able to maybe update their name. Uh, we should allow them to update their email, their password, about me, profile, picture, skills, account status. No, that's for the admin level user. Profile status, yes. Date created, date updated, these are automatic. And then uh, profile views will be for the details page. Okay, let's hit next. All right, so now let's configure this. We have this to be a text field because I want my end user to be able to update their name. So that will be a required field. Same thing with last name. That's going to be a required field. Email is automatically going to be required because it's unique in the table. We have our password field if we want them to update their password. However, when it comes to the password field, you really want to create a new page for that field by itself. You really don't want to include the password field in the main update form. So I'm going to exclude that from my update page. Usually when I said when it, when it comes to the password, you want to have a separate web page where the user can go to to update their own password. Okay, you don't want to mix that with the rest of these fields. Then we have the about me that's a text area. This will be required, but it will only be required when I make my profile public. And you'll see how we use conditional rule here to do that. Profile picture, let's move that to the top. Uh, let's have that be a file. Display it as an image. Let's set the width to maybe 175 pixels. And then for my skills, we're going to use a multi-select list box. And then let's have the profile status be a checkbox. And we'll say something like check to make profile public. And then we're going to use some rules here. And the rule that I want to create is if the profile status is checked, I want to require the profile photo, the about me section, and the skills section. So these three fields need to be required if they check to make their profile public. Because I don't want their profile to be public if they don't have a photo or if they don't list any skills. There's no point. Okay, so we're going to use the rules tab and we're going to say if the profile is not checked or is, sorry, is checked, okay, we're going to require the profile picture. We're going to require the about me section and we're also going to require the skills. So they have to fill something in if they want to make their profile public. Let's come back to the elements tab. And if you look at my live example here, let me sign in. I have this tab up here for profile views and I have my public profile. So we need to create both of these in our update profile page. I'm not going to style them. You've seen, you guys have seen my live streams in the past to know how to do that. 
all I'm going to do is create an HTML block up above, and we're going to say something like this. Let's disable the toolbar, and we'll say B, profile views. This is to make it bold. Okay, and then we're going to insert that counter, profile views. That's the field. I want that to be, let's just do it as a string. Okay, so now this will display how many profile views, how many people have seen my profile. And then underneath that line break, we're going to create that clickable link so that we can see um, our public profile. Okay, so we're going to say href equals and view my profile, close the a tag. And here we need to now um, list that link where my public profile is going to be. So I created another page on my website. Let me go to it. It's called public profile. So that's the page. I'm just going to come over here and copy any one of these links that I have. Copy that. Come back to my data page and then paste. And we're going to call this public profile. And that's where I plan on deploying the actual public profile data page, which is not going to be editable, okay, where people can actually see my, my profile publicly. And then I want to open it up in a new tab. So target equals underscore blank. Okay, so this will be a link, my profile, and where people can come and see my profile. Okay, so where is my public profile? And one more thing that I forgot to add is to make sure you pass the member ID to your profile so that when you share that link, people are seeing the member profile for that specific ID. So here on the data page, we're going to say question mark, MID from member ID equals sign, and then we're going to insert the member ID like that. Okay, so let's hit finish and save. And let's deploy that data page to myprofile.html. So come over here. Let's find that page, myprofile.html. Paste, save, and let's publish. So reload my profile, move it here. Yes. And let's test it out. Okay, so my profile of use is 30 because it's borrowing the same data from my other table because I just copied the table. Okay, I have the identical application created and I just made a copy of it. But when I made a copy of it, it already had 30 views. That's why you see number 30. But when you build this from start, uh, you will see zero. Okay. So now I can view my public, public profile, but when I view it, there's not going to be anything on it because I haven't deployed my two data pages that I need to deploy. But you can see that it's showing the profile for that member ID. And now if I wanted to share that profile, I can just copy that link and email it to somebody else, post it to my social media account if I want people to see my profile. Okay. Let me see if there are any questions. I don't see any questions. I apologize if I'm going a little bit fast, if you guys are not able to keep up with the pace. Uh, but don't worry, I will have this entire application available as a download in the description, and you're going to be able to see exactly what I did. Okay. All right. So what's next? Let's create the report that allows me to see my messages. And we'll, we'll do that next. So we'll hit data pages, we'll build a new data page, reports, let's go with the list layout. When it comes to reading data, I always write if you have long text, I always recommend list, if you're going to choose a results page, because tabular, it's very confined in terms of data cells, you know, it's usually good if you have like a one or two word answer, then I recommend tabular. But if you have long text, and we do we have the message itself, we want to be able to read that message in more of a list format as opposed to tabular format. So let's hit next. We're going to base that off of our, me uh, sorry, our messages table. Let's give it a name. View our messages. Use the same style, blue, same localization. Restrict access because you have to log in before you can view your messages. Make sure you apply your login screen. We hit next. And let's not have the ability to search. You can have a search form if you want to, but I always like to just filter my data if I'm not dealing with too many messages. But if you do get overwhelmed with messages and you need to be able to find them based on some filters, then you can build a search form if you'd like. 
I need to be able to see the messages that pertain only to my member ID. So we need to enable record level security and member ID needs to match. So when I log in as Ned, or if I log in as Alan, or if I log in as Ali or Brian, I am only looking at the messages that belong to my ID. Okay. I don't want to be able to see another member's messages. Okay, so I'm not going to filter based on any one of my fields. Let's cl click next. And now let's choose the fields in the results page. So I want to be able to see uh, the date that the message was sent. Uh, I want to be able to see the subject line, the message itself, who the message came from, first, last, last name, and then if they submitted email and phone numbers so that I can contact the person that sent me that message. We're going to keep this the way it is. You guys know that when it comes to displaying data on the results page, you don't have to use our standard features. You could add an HTML block and then you can insert all of your fields as parameters. If you'd like to modify the look and feel of how that message is displayed. Okay. But for the interest of time, we're not going to do that today. We're going to hit next. Uh, let's sort the messages to see the most recent first. Okay, so Z to A, I want to be able to see the latest message. Uh, yeah, 24 records per page I, by default. I think that's fine. We're going to hit next. No need for the details page. I'm already displaying everything on the details page on the on the results page. So there's really no need for me to go into the details page. But what I could do if I wanted to delete messages, I could enable maybe inline delete, which allows the user now to delete that message and clear the inbox if they need to. Save changes, deploy, enable, grab our simple embed code. Let's go back to our template and we're going to find a page called messages and just paste our code. Save. And I need to make that live. So we need to refresh here and SCP messages, move that over to our hosting provider. And now we should be able to see that under messages. I think there's only going to be one. Yeah. Because when I made a copy of this application in my table, I only had one message. That's why I'm only able to see this one message here. But later on, once we finish everything, you will see how we um, can collect additional messages here internally. All right, let's build this one to find members. So for that one, let's create a new data page and we're going to use a gallery layout. I like gallery layout when it comes to profiles or looking at directories, because in each one of these boxes, you could have an image and you can have some basic info about the user. And then we can click on the details page if we need to see more info pertaining to that specific user or member in this case, don't use tabular because if you're dealing with images, your image can be a little bit bigger. And then if you have a tabular format, think about it one cell, and if you have a big image, it can skew that cell and it won't look proportionate with the rest of the row. Okay. You could also use list layout if you'd like. I've seen that with real estate properties, but I'm just going to go with gallery layout for today's live stream. All right. Based on the members table. So find members style. We're going to use uh, again, blue style is fine. Localization, English restrict access because this directory is only available to people who sign up for our website. Can you make that public so anybody can see the members? Yes, you could. It's up to you. Okay, it's completely up to you. If you think about LinkedIn, you know, in order to find other members on LinkedIn, you have to log in first. Okay? Unless they send you their public profile link that you can click on and then you can see their public profile. But if I want to find other members, I have to log into the application. So this workflow is entirely up to you and your vision and how you want the application to function. But for me, I made it completely password protected. Okay. So let's have the ability to search. Let's display the results below the search form and let's have, um, display the results on the initial load. So not only do I want to see the search form, but I want to see all the members right away directly underneath the search form. No need for record level security. I want to be able to see all the members that are public which brings me to the next screen. And I want to be able to include some search fields. So let's search based on the members, first name, last name. You can also have email if you'd like, it's up to you. But for me, I had it based on first name and last name and skills. And you also want to include profile status. The reason why you want to include that field, we're going to make that field hidden. Okay. So make that field hidden 
and have it be checked. What that means is if somebody is looking for a profile, the profile has to be checked or public in order for somebody to find it. So if you look at my live example here, if I go back to my profile, if I check the box, that means my profile is public. Somebody's going to be able to find it because by default, you can see I'm making that checkbox checked. So only find the profiles that are checked, in other words. Okay, so we have first name, let's do contains on that. We have last name, let's do contains. And then for skills, we're going to do a multi-select. I think I'm going to do a multi-select dropdown. I think that works. Okay, and we're going to do equal. No, let's do contains. So it does an or search. Sorry, we're going to do contains because I want to do or because if I'm looking for Caspio and Webflow, I want to do Caspio or Webflow. So it lists everyone that specializes in Caspio or Webflow or Caspio, right? So I like to use or criteria for that. Uh, if you use and, now let's say you're searching for somebody who specializes in Caspio and Webflow. It's only going to return users that specialize in Caspio and the Webflow, right? Both of those conditions have to be met. However, if you have somebody else who specializes in Caspio, that person won't be found if they don't specialize in Caspio and Webflow, right? So that's why I like to use or show me everybody who specializes in Caspio or Webflow. And then I can filter out myself. Okay, so this person knows Caspio or Webflow, so they're listed. Okay. And then let's see, what else, what else, what else? I think I'm okay with that. Let's hit next. On the results page, I want to be able to display the person's image, maybe their name. Uh, the email will keep hidden because I want them to be able to send a message. Uh, we want to display the about me section, skills, and the rest of this information we can include in the details page. Yeah, let me just remind myself what I did here on my application. So if I find members, I think I'm passing the ID from the results page. Yeah, I'm passing the ID. So as you can see, I made an, uh, the name field, the clickable link from the results page. And when I click on that link, I'm passing the ID of the member. Okay, so let's come over here. So this is my results page. We're going to include, for now, I'm going to include the first and last name. That's fine. We're going to hit next. And then on the results page, we're going to add an HTML block, disable the toolbar. And let's write a simple link here, href equals, if I can type today, equals. And I'm going to say the name of the user, which I have the full name. Okay. And this name now is going to be a clickable link. So therefore, I don't really need to include the first and last name here in the results page because I'm displaying the full name inside my HTML block. And now the page that I want the user to go to when they click on the name field, let me come back to see what page I created for that. I think it's called the member details. So that's the name of the page. Okay. I'm just going to copy this link, come back to my data page, paste, and rename my profile to member details. But in the process, I have to pass the member ID. So question or MID, which is the parameter name, equal sign and pass the member ID. Okay. So now the name field becomes clickable. When people click on the name, I go to the member details and on that member details web page, we're going to deploy our member details data page. Okay. We have the profile picture. Let's display that as an image. Let's have the image be maybe 175 pixels. The about me. Now, the About Me section, if you have a lot of text, because we do allow for 64,000 characters, what I like to do is truncate the text, so maybe to about 40 characters, and allow users to expand and collapse. Okay, so that way you're not seeing long text in that profile in the About Me on the, on the uh, gallery layout. It shrinks it down, it truncates the text to about 40 characters, and then the end user can... Uh, ought, uh, decide to expand or collapse the About Me section if they want to, if they want to read more about that user's profile. And then for skills, uh, we're going to keep this as a bulleted list. I think that's fine. Let's hit next. Let's display maybe a grid 4 by 24. 
hit next and no need for a details page because the name itself will take us to the details page. So we're going to disable that and click finish and let's go ahead and deploy that back into our web template here. Let's find members. There it is. Replace that, save, and let's push it live. So same as before. So we'll find members, move that over. And let's go to our website and let's see what it looks like. Find members. Perfect. And I only have three members in this table. Okay. And you can see there's my profile. That's the about me section. I can expand and collapse if I need to. Here are the skills. And then the name itself becomes a clickable link to take me to that web page called member details, where I now need to build another data page to um, display my details to the end user. Okay. And just to make sure it's working the way it's supposed to, if I go to my profile and let's say I disable my account and hit update and I go back to find members, it no longer shows me. So it's working the way it's supposed to. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that public again, hit update, find members, and there it is. Okay, good. So we have our messages, we have our member details. Uh, I think what will be more fun to do next is to create that public profile. So when I click on that link, it shows me my profile, including the form that allows people to contact me. So let's build that details page really quickly. So let's come back here. And it needs to be read only because I don't want anyone to modify my information in the public profile. So we're going to build a brand new data page and let's do a details data page. Hit next based off of the members table. We're going to call this public profile, same style, same localization, and it needs to be public facing. So you no longer need to restrict access because that profile needs to be public for anyone to see as long as they have the URL to my profile. Hit next, filter the data, and we're going to filter the data based on the member ID. So include the member ID to the right. Okay, we're going to hit next. And we need to receive the parameter externally as MID. Okay, and value must be required. In order for you to see my profile, value that's passed in the URL has to be required in order for you to view that information. So that's why we select value required. And now I'm not going to spend too much time here on the details page. So we're going to include the profile photo, my name, my about me section and my skills. That's all I want the end user to see when they look at my public profile. We're going to hit next. So the image needs to be displayed as an image. Let's do 175. That will be my full name. That'll be my about me section. And these are going to be the skills that I specialize in with the no code platforms. So that's my details page. We're going to hit finish. Let's deploy, grab our embed code, copy back to my HTML files. So public profile. So this will be the top section and the bottom section will be that form that allows people to contact me so that I can see my messages. But for now, if I push this live, let's reload again, public profile. Okay. Watch what happens now when I click on view my profile. Now you should be able to see the top section. So here's my public profile. It's read only. Nobody has the ability to modify the data. And right now we're going to build that form that allows people to message me. But you can see how I pass the ID. And this is my personal member ID in the application that belongs to me and nobody else. It's a unique field. It's the primary key that only belongs to me. So now let's build a form. So come back to data pages, create a new data page. Submission form, hit next. Uh, that's going to be based off of the messages table. And we're going to call this send message. And I'm just going to put this as the public form because it needs to be, it doesn't need to be password protected, right? It's a public facing form. So blue style, English localization, no need to restrict access, hit next. And what you need to do now is you need to now include the member ID as the filtering field. I'm sorry. You actually need all the fields in the submission form. Okay. So you need all the fields on your submission form. You're going to hit next. And Remember how you passed the member ID to the public profile page in the URL? 
Well, the submission form needs to receive that member ID because when you submit the form, we need to stamp that member's ID in the messages table so that later on that user, me, will be able to see the message that belongs to my member ID because it exists in the messages table. Okay, so we have the member ID field. You go to the advanced tab, you say receive the value externally, and the parameter name is MID. And if you'd like, initially you can keep that exposed as a text field, but later on you can come back and make that field hidden because the end user doesn't need to see that information. All the end user needs to see is to fill in the subject line. You can make that required. Message will be a text area. You can make that required as well. And then if you want them to fill in the first name, last name, email, and then the date sent will be a timestamp. Okay, and that's it. So now when I hit finish to save my changes, I deploy my form, grab the embed code. Let's go to our page, public profile, contact data page, and let's push that live. Refresh, public profile, save, reload. Let's go to our public profile. Now I have too many things opened up. So now somebody can see my profile and if they, if they decide to send me a message, there's a form underneath here where I can say subject line, um, I need help with Webflow. Can you contact me today? First name, Molly Smith, email Molly S at test.com. And it's just some random phone number here for now. Once I hit submit, there's a hidden field here that's receiving this member ID. Okay, the form has a hidden field. Okay, it's passing this ID that belongs to me. Upon submission, we're gonna have this member ID be stamped in the members in the messages table. Okay, so when I go back to my application, remember we have an RLS record level security set on the messages data page that allows me just to be able to see my own messages, and that's why I'm able to see the one that just came in from Molly Smith. Okay. So I just want to show you guys that data page one more time, the messages data page, your messages. My messages, that's a little better. Okay, we have the RLS set in order for the member to see just the messages that belong to that to his or her member ID. Okay. All right, we're almost done. Let's see the time. It's 1058. I need another five or ten minutes. And then we'll be done with today's content. So the next data page that makes sense to create is when we go to find members and we click on the details. I want the member details here to be displayed um, and also to send a message. So I think that I can now repurpose the public facing data page and just make it authenticated, which will basically display the same exact information. So I can take my public profile data page. I can make a copy of it. Okay. And we can just say internal. And I need to edit and I need to apply my authentication because this one will be password protected and you can make changes to it too. It doesn't have to be identical to the public profile one. Okay. This can look different if you decide to include another field, it's up to you. And let's see, member ID is being received. That's good. All of that is okay with me. Let's click finish to save deploy. So I think we're going to have end up with nine data pages copy. And this is member details. So here it is. I will need to put a line break here so that when we build the form, it needs to be underneath my profile page. So save. Let's push this live. Member details. Okay, and let's come back and refresh. Okay, so again, we're seeing the same exact profile if anybody wants to review it. And then now we need to build a form to contact the member. And this one here, we can make um, password protected. So again, we're going to reuse the same data page. So send message. I'm going to make a copy of it and we'll just rename this to internal. Save. Edit. And we're going to make it password protected. Let me see if I need to make any more changes. So for member ID, I passed the member ID to the details. So again, I need to be able to receive the member ID 
we have this information here. Let me just see if I can even maybe. Yeah, I can just automatically populate my own email here inside the email field. So I don't have to manually type it in because when I log in, we can use the authentication table to immediately put the information inside these inside these fields if you wanted to. Same thing with the first name. I can authentication, sorry, authentication, populate my first name. So that the end user doesn't have to manually put that information in because we already have that information from the member table. Okay, so let's try this. Let's grab our send message internal, copy, and then paste. And this will be the last data page. <clears throat> Refresh, member details. All right. And you can see how it populated my information. So if I'm looking at members, let's say I'm looking for somebody that specializes in, I don't know, maybe uh, Zapier and I want to contact Ryan Lee. It's going to populate my information here so I don't have to manually put that info in. And I can also make these fields hidden, okay? Where I only display the subject and message and I hit submit and then Ryan will be able to see his messages and be able to see who the message came from and subject and the message itself, okay? All right, well, that is the application. I know it looks, uh, it doesn't look polished, um, and I apologize if I stumbled along the way. Usually when you're developing applications, it's inevitable. It's bound to happen. You're going to hit some roadblocks. It happens just because um, you have to be very meticulous when it comes to coding. Even one letter can throw things off. But we fixed it pretty quickly. And we built this whole entire application in one hour. I'm going to give you a polished application that I created at the very beginning of today's live stream. Uh, as a download. So if you wanted to borrow some aspects of the application, you can import it into your account. You can see how it developed the whole thing and then you can modify it or use it as is. And it's a good learning tool as well if you guys want to. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed the main content of today's live stream. Let me know if you have any questions on what we covered today. And then I'm going to answer the quick question that came in last live stream in terms of how we share a results page on social media. Hopefully that person is here today to see the answer. If not, that's okay. Maybe they'll watch the video later on. Hey, thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I only get one hour for these sessions. So I never know in terms of timing. I don't usually gauge myself to see if I'm going to be able to squeeze everything in one hour. <laughs> So I figured if I have an application that's less than 10 data pages, I can build that pretty quickly in less than an hour. It's going to be a little fast paced. Uh, that's expected. Uh, but at least, you know, if you guys need to go back and see what I did, you can always fast forward. You can pause the video later on and just see exactly what I did. Hey, Taliza. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> so let me show you. Maybe I didn't. You're here, great. Maybe I did not understand the question, so I'm gonna show you what I did, and hopefully this answers your question. If not, just shoot me an email offline, let me know exactly what you were thinking, and I'll come up with a workaround for you. So here's my email in the chat window. I'm here until Wednesday. Wednesday is my last day, and I go, I'm off for two months until um, October uh, when I come back, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, with, with, with enough practice, you know, practice makes perfect or practice makes permanent. You know, you're, you can build these pretty quickly yourself. But that's just the workflow, the functionality, right? But it takes much longer to come up with the aesthetics, the look and feel and polishing the final look of the application because I would never go live with something like this. This just doesn't look good, okay? But the workflow, you can get it done very quickly. Even if it's like 20, 30, 40 data pages, it doesn't take more than a couple hours once you get the hang of things. Because you can duplicate data pages and just modify them slightly for different needs. But ah, thank you, King Capo. Thanks for the message. I appreciate that. Um, so let's see. Let's see what I did. So we're gonna come back here to my home page, and I have it set up as a separate application called Share Results, and I have two data pages. So let me give you a live demo of this, and then you can tell me if this is uh, kind of what you were thinking. Now, where did I publish this? 
Let me just remember where I... I think I called it share. Let me see. I called it share, I believe. That's the name of my folder. Share and then search.html. Okay, so let's go to it. So we'll go with sumapp.com mp share search.html. So if you're going to do something like that, and if you want to use mainly mostly standard features, you have to separate the search form, uh, search form from the results page. All right. So if I look for, let's say, first names that contain letter A, and I hit submit, it's going to take me to the results page, and it's going to list all the first names that contain letter A, as you can see. Okay. All of these contain letter A, and it's showing me 35 or 25 entries. And then what I have here at the top is I have a link. There's two methods. I have a link that when I click on that link to share the results, it's going to open up a new tab. And then I can copy this link and I can share that link maybe on my LinkedIn page for people to be able to see just the data that contains that letter A in the first name. Or if you use a little bit of script to copy to clipboard, let's start over. Let's come back here, search again. Let's say we're looking for a company name that has a letter A in it. And let me see if I can get a few results in ABBA. Okay, so now we have four entries. And if I'm looking just to share these four entries with somebody, I can copy this to clipboard, right? And now that it's copied, if I share that and people click on that link, they're going to be able to see just those four entries from the results page. Okay, now you tell me if this is what you were kind of hoping. Now, you don't have to just share the tabular results page. If you had multiple charts, right, to filter the data using some uh, KPIs, you can have a pivot table. So whatever is listed here on this web page, if you deploy multiple data pages, let's say you have four charts, you have a pivot table, you have a tabular report, you copy that link, you share that link with somebody, and now they're going to be able to see the same exact results. Okay. So this is if you're sharing a public facing results page. If you're sharing something that's password protected, well, then you're going to need to have a user table where they log in first. And then they have to, once they log in, they're able to see that, uh, the dashboard and the whole 360 view of all the data, whatever you're showing on that dashboard view. So there are two ways to go about it. One is public facing, which is what I created. And the other one is password protected, where people have to log in first before they're able to see all the content. So let me know if this is kind of what you were hoping to do. If not, I apologize. This is the way I, underst I understood it. Um, and then I can send you what I did. If you just send me an email, I can send you the application and then you can go through that application and see exactly what I did. So here's the search form. It's a submission form. And we're using, as you can see, virtual fields. Now, virtual fields don't submit anything to a table. They're really just meant to display data on the form. But what you're doing is when you hit submit, you're passing, sorry, when you hit submit. So this is the first name, last name, company name, and email. But when you hit submit, I am taking the user to my results page. This is the web page that contains my results. But in the process, I am passing all of these fields as parameters inside the URL. So I'm passing the first name, last name, company name, and email. So then when we get to the results page, let me hit finish here. When we get to the results page, we're filtering based on those values that are received. So here's my tabular results page. Hit next. Same table. Hit next filter data, and then I have those four fields that we're receiving. And now you can see the first name, advanced tab, external parameter, receive first name. If empty, ignore criteria, because if you don't pass anything to the results page, just display me all the first names anyway. Same thing with last name, same thing with company name, and same thing with email. And then the easier way, if you don't want to use JavaScript, the easier way is just to look at this first top line that I have. Just focus on this here. So you create a link that's receiving all of those values as parameters in the URL. And then you have the name of the link just called share results. When you click on it, I open up a new tab that's received all of those values as parameters. And then you can just share that link. If you want to create a button that copies it to a clipboard, well, then you can create a button. Okay. 
And then in the footer, I have a little bit of script that allows you to do that. Don't worry about this line down here. Okay. This is just a script that allows you to copy that uh, receive value. And I can send this to you. So just let me know if I'm on the, on the right track here. If not, I apologize. That's the way I understood the question to share the results is I think how you phrased it. So just let me know, Talisa, okay? But the, the reason why you have to separate the search from the results is because using standard features, if you just run a search to see the results, you're not passing those values. So there's no way to share that link to save those values stored in the URL for what you're filtering. So is anyone planning on building a uh, directory type application based on today's live stream? <laughs> when, I, when I came up with this idea, I was thinking maybe I could create something, but then again, there's always that conflict of interest uh, that I really can't. But this will be, because uh, there's such a huge um, market for no code now with so many tools coming out. You know, Caspian has been around since 2000. Uh, I mean, we were doing no code before no code was coined turned into industry, right? And now you have so many more um, that are coming up. And I'm seeing all of these no code, low code communities, but I haven't seen a like a network of no code developers that can register, log in and just collaborate and ask questions between each other if they have questions on Webflow or Caspia or some other no code platform. Okay, so let me see. I wanted like someone sharing his profile page, for example, I can share this YouTube on WhatsApp at one click when I place share. I see. Then in that case, what I recommend, which you can also do with what we looked at today, if you go to how to, and if you look for, just call it share this, I believe. Uh, hold on, let me just look share. Where is it? Shared object, sharing an app with another account. Sorry, create this or add this button. Okay. So if you click on this little button, uh, you could, and then when you click on it, you can expand that and you'll be able to see um, Facebook, you'll be able to see Twitter, depending on which ones you list. But you need to have an account with share, or share this or add this.com. And then you just add this little bit of script to your data page like that. And then you're going to see that button. So let me see if it's not connected to my application, but let's just see what happens if I paste that above my results page. Yeah, see so the URL. Yeah, you need to get this from, um, from add this. So let me refresh and just see what that looks like. Yeah, I need to grab this. I need to have an add this account in order for that to work the way it's supposed to. And then I can share quickly to WhatsApp or other integrated system that they have. So it looks like it's a combination, um, combination of what we looked at today in my directory application because I have that already built in here. So my profile, or I'll use this one, which looks a little bit nicer. So my profile, when I click on that, maybe you have a collapsible section here that shows you all of those social media handles like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. So when you click on it, it will share to that particular network. Okay. So try that. Do what we learned today with that add this button, because this is the only one that I have done in the past that I know it works. It's just been a long time since I've done it, but it needs to connect to your add this account. But you want more of a seamless way of sharing that profile. You don't want users to copy, paste. You want to just push a button and goes directly, goes directly there is what I'm hearing. So I can tell you that's not a standard feature in Caspio, but this will be a good workaround for you to practice. So let me, let me send you this uh, knowledge base article that we have. Okay. So I'll send this to you here in the chat so you can look at it and try to make it work. 
So Baird has one project plan for late fall. Okay, good. Good, yeah. Directories are fun, especially um, if you get a lot of traffic to come in and a lot of members sign up. And uh, later on, you can think about ways to monetize or just make it completely free and then just place ads, targeted ads throughout the website. And we have officially covered off all the content. As King Kapo said, we did a little bit of overtime. Usually we get one hour, but it is, as you can see, 15 minutes past the hour. Uh, I hope you guys don't forget about the live stream. We are going to be back in two months. <laughs> this is just temporary where we uh, put this on hold for a little while, but I will be back. I can't say I'm going to be back refreshed and relaxed, uh, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back. I'm going to post a new topic this week, but that topic won't be until October 31st or maybe November. We'll see. Uh, but at least you'll see the topic, what the title is going to be when I come back. And then if you have any suggestions or recommendations for what you would like to see in our live stream, definitely let me know. And I will see if I can include that later on. And Talisa, I'm going to try to make this work for you. I'll see if I can maybe use add this. I'll create the account and see if I can simplify it for you when I come back. Uh, but yeah, just bear with me. In the meantime, if this is a pressing need for you, just check with the support team or get an onboarding expert session and see if somebody can help you connect that. Uh, please don't forget to download. Uh, there's more to it. Send me an email. I sent my, do you have my email to Lisa? Send me an email. Well, what you meant by download. I think I may have forgotten about the download. I apologize. Um, so just send me an email what you were thinking, but if you can't wait until I come back, then just check with the support team, uh, check with the support team to want to see if it's something that can be done using standard features or if it requires customization with our professional services team. All right. Once again, for me, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys coming back to the Caspio live sessions. Hopefully you're always able to learn something new. Um, I understand that the live streams are a little bit more technical. So if you're new to Caspio, I don't recommend the live stream until you've gone through all of our training classes, which are offered on our website. They're completely free. So if you go to caspio.com, click on resources, free online training, I recommend that you take the basic, intermediate, and the advanced session. And then down below here, you'll be able to see the live stream, which you can attend. Live streams are a little bit more technical. It assumes that you have a, some knowledge of using the Caspio platform because it does tend to be a little bit fast paced and sometimes will go beyond the standard features and show some HTML, some CSS, JS to enhance the usability. Okay. Thank you, Didier. Thanks for coming back. Good to see you again. I wonder what time it is over there. <laughs> I don't know if it's morning time for you or, or late in the evening. But whatever it is, good morning, good evening to all of you guys, depending on where you're tuning in from. So again, thank you so much. I'll keep the chat running again for another minute here. I'm going to close the live stream for any last minute questions here. And yeah, I'll see you in two months. Yeah, it's late in the day for you. Yeah, well, I appreciate you squeezing and allocating some time for the live stream uh, to watch this session. So thanks so much. And I'll see you guys in two months. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.